Okay, talking about Dalton's law of partial pressures. Okay, and just take a moment, let's think about what do you know about the behavior of gases? And from KMT, pressure, volume, temperature, number of particles, all um, kind of define a gas system. Okay, as the number of particles go up, the volume increases if I hold the pressure and temperature constant. The number of particles go up, the pressure increases because the number of collisions against the system, against the walls of the container increase, again assuming volume and temperature remain constant. And then how much space is there between particles, hopefully relatively very large spaces, right, between particles. Particles th themselves are very, very small, okay? Pressure comes from collisions of particles with walls of the container. And now we're going to answer the question, what, were hap what would happen if two gases were added together? How would that affect the pressure of the system if we assume that the volume and the temperature remain constant? Okay. If we look at strictly the definition of partial pressure, it states that the total pressure of a system, of a gas system, depends on the total number of gas particles, not, not the type of particles. So it doesn't matter what gases I'm mixing. Once I add them, what can I say about the total number of particles? Okay, and it's almost as if, um, no it is as if, they all, I just increase the number of particles. So if I increase the number of particles, the, the pressure of the system is going to increase. Okay. So if I know the pressure that the first sample would have on that container, and I know the pressure that the second sample of gas will have on the container, all I have to do is add those pressures together, and this will be the total pressure of those two gas samples added together in that container. Okay. So, for example, I have a gas cylinder of the purple gas, and it is helium, and that system is at two atmospheres. I have a second cylinder, that's argon, it's at four atmospheres. If I mix these two gas samples together in the same container, because the gas particles are so far away from each other, relatively, and the particles are so small, the number of collisions with the container in this sample is the same as the number in this sample, added to the number in this sample. So the total pressure is the pressure of my first sample of helium plus the pressure of the argon as if they were in the container by themselves, adding them up to get the total pressure of the system. We're not going to look at that one. So if we do a quick problem Scuba tank has a pressure of O2 oxygen of 0 0.450 atmospheres and helium at 850 millimeters mercury. What is the total pressure in millimeters mercury in the tank? Well, PO2, that's how you would write it, is 0 0.450 atmospheres. Pressure of helium is 855 millimeters mercury. It's asking me for the total pressure 
in millimeters mercury. Let's convert the pressure of oxygen to millimeters mercury first. And if I convert that, ooh, I don't, oh, I don't know what it's doing. Anyway, uh, 342 millimeters mercury for the oxygen. Total pressure is going to be the pressure of the oxygen plus the pressure of the helium, which is 342 millimeters mercury plus 855 millimeters mercury, or Eleven hundred ninety seven millimeters mercury. Okay. And we'll probably do that problem in class. That's partial pressures.